Only one creature has carved a life for itself in every habitat on Earth. That creature is us. All over the world, we still use our ingenuity to survive in the wild places, far from the city lights, face to face with raw nature. This is the human planet. The sea covers 70% of our planet's surface. It's home to three quarters of all life on Earth. All the creatures found here are perfectly adapted to thrive in the ocean. All except one. are not evolved for a life aquatic. And we're way out of our depth in this dangerous and alien world. But great opportunities await those people who dare to venture into the water. As we immerse ourselves ever deeper in the big blue, how do we overcome the enormous challenges that confront us? relationship with the ocean begins on the coast. Even here, the sea is a force to be reckoned with. Galicia in northern Spain is home to one of Europe's most treacherous coasts. But the more extreme the conditions, the greater the rewards. If like Javier and Angel, you're prepared to take the risk. Oh, mi madre. Está and Ángel are on the hunt for a strange creature that clings to the wave-battered rocks at the bottom of these cliffs. They have to move fast. Their quarry is only exposed at low tide. Vamos ahora arriba, arriba. Vamos que vo. Eh, cuidado ahora, cuidado ahora, joder. Tranquilo, tranquilo, cone, cone. It's goose barnacles they're after, a highly prized delicacy that can sell for 200 euros a kilo. But it's not easy pickings. Each year, about five collectors die. Few dare work when it's this rough, but those who do can charge a premium for their harvest. Despite the onslaught, Javier's filled his bag. Now it's Ankel's turn, and though it's getting even rougher, 
He's going in with no safety rope. Working unattached allows him to dash between waves and reach the lowest rocks where the biggest barnacles grow. But one slip could be fatal. Although the tide's coming in, Ankel's determined to collect more. Javier and Angel's gamble paid off. In two hours, they've gathered enough goose barnacles to fetch around 800 euros. Not bad for a day at the seaside. <laughs> it's this abundance of food that entices us into the waves. And just a little further out, there are even greater riches. Coastal waters account for just one-tenth of the world's oceans, but they're home to the vast majority of marine life. The trouble is, as we venture further from the shore, the dangers escalate. Benjamin's training to be a harpoonist. And he knows any day now all he's learned could be put to the test. Keluar untuk di berburu. Karena kalau tidak ikut turun, sebentar kan tidak dapat bagian juga. Jadi harus keluar turun di berburu. He lives on a small Indonesian island called Lembata. Few crops grow in this rocky land, and even surviving from the sea is a struggle. But there's one animal they wait for that can dramatically change their fortunes. the whole village springs into action. It's a race against time to get out to sea. Benjamin and the rest of the crew are about to take on the biggest predator that's ever lived. Ikan paus itu kadang-kadang dengan kecepatan ekornya atau kepalanya itu bisa menyebabkan kematian juga. They all know the risks, but opportunities don't come much bigger than this. The sperm whale. Up to 18 meters long, these mighty leviathans are powerful animals, and they won't go down without a fight. With simple wooden boats and handmade weapons, the whalers seem ill-prepared for battle, but this is how it's been for 600 years. They can only harpoon the whale when it surfaces to breathe. So they need to move fast. Benjamin's brother prepares to launch himself at the whale. This is the most dangerous moment of all. But 
that he misses. And now someone else must step up before the whale dies. Benjamin's moment has arrived. As the whale fights to break free, they move to harpoon it again. They need to prevent it from diving and pulling a boat under. But it's not enough. Terrified of the thrashing whale, the crew scramble to safety. Another boat attacks and harpoons the whale once more. Now dragging several boats, the whale slowly tires. Eventually, its struggles are exhausted and a final cut through its backbone is made. It's been an epic eight-hour battle, but Benjamin has shown his skill and bravery. And this time, everyone returns safely home. The death of a whale may be sad to us, but this is their lifeline. One catch can feed a village for months. And this small-scale hunt in Lembata doesn't threaten whale numbers in these oceans. They only take around six whales a year. Nothing is wasted. The meat is shared out. As the man who dealt the decisive blow, Benjamin gets a larger share. And for a while at least, his family won't be going hungry. Although we've evolved for a life on land, we've become remarkably efficient oceanic hunters. Adaptability is the secret of our success at discovering new ways to exploit the ocean. And in a few special places, this means working with the creatures of the sea. These fishermen of Laguna in Brazil have forged one of the most extraordinary partnerships between humans and wild animals.